What would happen if Tanjiro fought every single Hashira in Demon Slayer? Who could he beat, and who would beat him? Well, I've split Tanjiro into four levels of strength, so let's start off with Tanjiro's weakest form. Can he even defeat one Hashira? He's got zero training, meaning that against any of the Hashira, he would get demolished. But there are two Hashira he might have a chance against. Mitsuri, the love Hashira, would be so shocked by Tanjiro's unexpected strength that she would lower her guard, allowing him to get a punch in. Remember, episode 1 Tanjiro is only 13 years old, and Mitsuri is known for taking young fighters less seriously. Her surprise would only last a second though, and she'd quickly defeat Tanjiro with her super strength. The insect Hashira Shinobu would get very unlucky with Tanjiro. See, she specializes in poisons, but they don't affect humans. So out of the 9 Hashira, level 1 Tanjiro wouldn't be able to kill a single one. This is just level 1 Tanjiro. We have 3 more levels to go until we reach Tanjiro strongest form. And while you might think that things get better for level 2 Tanjiro, it doesn't really go that way. See, level 2 Tanjiro stats are 2 years training under the X water Hashira, mastery of all the water breathing forms, and total concentration breathing, meaning he's now much stronger than level 1. Unfortunately, the 2 years of training will make Tanjiro lose the one thing that gave him a chance against the Hashira, unpredictability. See, this unpredictable nature of Tanjiro helped him nearly kill you. It's what would allow him to get a free punch on Mitsuri. But level 2 Tanjiro would let go of his unpredictable nature and instead focus on Demon Slayer techniques. This would only make things easier for the Hashira because they know Demon Slayer techniques. And for level 2, every Hashira would easily defeat him in seconds. Tanjiro might be able to hold his own for a very short time against Shinobu, but his sword technique is still nothing compared to her speed and experience. Meaning that of the 9 Hashira, level 2 Tanjiro would also lose to all of them. But this is where things get interesting because for level 3, Tanjiro makes a huge leap in power, going from an average fighter to his very peak as a sun breather. In this form, Tanjiro has fully mastered sun breathing and is able to use all 12 forms. He also has access to the transparent world, which lets him predict his enemy's attacks. So what happens if this version of Tanjiro gets in a fight with the Hashira? Well, starting with the weakest Hashira, Shinobu, the fight would start off with Shinobu immediately using her speed. In the manga, she was so fast that even Doma, the upper rank 2, could keep up with her. Against Tanjiro, this speed would help her, but Tanjiro's transparent world ability would give him the ultimate advantage, allowing him to predict all of Shinobu's moves. She'd attack, he'd quickly counter, continuing to counter her attacks until he'd see an opportunity to predict Shinobu's next move to fatally injure her. And since her poison only affects demons, Shinobu's two strongest powers would be useless, speed and poison, meaning that Tanjiro would easily kill her in a one-on-one -on -one battle. Next, we have Tanjiro's fight against Tengen, the sound Hashira, and in this battle, Tengen would immediately be at a disadvantage. See, without a Demon Slayer mark, he's already much weaker than the other Hashira. But there is one ability that would maybe help him defeat Tanjiro. Tengen's musical score. This technique allows him to predict all of his opponent's attacks, and it's strong. With it, Tengen was able to fight off Gyutaro's attacks while being severely poisoned and having lost a hand. What's even more impressive is that Tengen was much weaker than Gyutaro, but with the power of the musical score, he was able to keep up with the upper moon, meaning that with this power, Tengen would have a chance against Tanjiro. But his power has one crucial weakness. You see, Tengen needs to fight against his opponent for a long time before he can activate his ability. So the fight would come down to whether or not Tengen could survive fighting Tanjiro long enough to activate his musical score. At first, I thought this would be easy for Tengen. He's an ex-ninja. Of course he can evade Tanjiro. But then I remembered that Tanjiro's transparent world ability is just overpowered. He would predict all of Tengen's evasive moves and kill him quickly. That's two Hashira down, seven to go. Rengoku is the next Hashira on the list, and there's two interesting things to note here. First, he'd be at a disadvantage because he doesn't have a Demon Slayer mark. Second, there's a tiny detail from his fight with Akaza we can't forget. See, during this fight, the upper moon says that Rengoku is close to reaching the realm of the highest. If Akaza was referring to the transparent world ability here, then that means Rengoku was killed before he gained this ability. And since Tanjiro has mastered the transparent world, this confirms that Tanjiro's strength has surpassed Rengoku. Now, some of you may be wondering, would Rengoku's flame breathing help him in a fight against a sun breather? I mean, the two styles do look similar. Unfortunately for Rengoku, this actually doesn't give him any advantage. Remember, the breathing styles are purely visual, and if you take these
these effects away, the two styles aren't similar at all, meaning that Rengoku would be the third Hashira to lose to level 3 Tanjiro. Now this is where things get interesting, because Tanjiro's next opponent is the love Hashira Mitsuri. But unlike all the previous Hashira, she has a Demon Slayer mark, which gives her a huge strength boost. See, her main ability is her extreme strength, and the mark increases it even more. She's so strong that during the fights against Muzan, Mitsuri ripped his arm off. But that's not the only power she has. Her unique blade is designed like a whip, allowing her to attack with extremely fast strikes while staying a safe distance away from her enemies. Now, if Mitsuri were to use her whip attacks against Tanjiro, he would counter them by using the transparent world. In the manga, he was able to do this to counter Muzan's whip attacks, so it makes sense that he would be able to dodge all of Mitsuri's too. But that doesn't mean he'd be able to kill her. Mitsuri would put up a barrage of whip attacks, making it impossible for Tanjiro to reach her. And this is the only way Mitsuri would be able to defeat Tanjiro. Because of Mitsuri's muscle density, her stamina would last longer than Tanjiro's, meaning he'd get tired first and get injured. At this point, he'd only survive if he used his secret sword ability. Tanjiro would have to use his Demon Slayer mark to turn his sword red, allowing him to cut through any of Mitsuri's whip attacks as well as her super tough skin. It's hard to say who would win in this matchup, but Tanjiro's powers give him an advantage, so we'll hand him the win. Next up is Muichido the Mist Pillar, and yet again this will be a tough battle for Tanjiro, because it will be the first fight where he's at a disadvantage. See, level 3 Tanjiro has won all the previous fights because of his transparent world ability, something that Muichido also has. And if that isn't enough, Muichido can also turn his blade red, meaning he has two of Tanjiro's strongest powers. Now, if you add his physical strength and battle experience, he's more powerful than Tanjiro in every category. But there is one thing going against Muichiro here. His strongest technique, obscuring clouds, disorients the opponent by hiding his presence. But since Tanjiro can use transparent world, this technique won't work on him. Luckily, Muichiro won't even need to use this move. With the power of his Demon Slayer mark, the transparent world ability, and a red blade, he has the exact same abilities as Tanjiro, along with way more experience and strength. Meaning that finally, Tanjiro loses against a Hashira. Now the Hashira coming up only gets stronger, so will Tanjiro be able to defeat the rest, or is this the beginning of his losing streak? Well, unfortunately for Tanjiro, he has another loss lined up against Obanai, because just like Muichiro, Obanai has the same overpowered abilities, as well as the physical strength to defeat Tanjiro. On top of that, Obanai has an extremely unique fighting style. His serpent breathing makes his blade seemingly extend while twisting and turning, something so confusing that it even caught Muzan off guard. Now, even if Tanjiro managed to obscure one of Obanai's senses, he'd still lose, because Kabamaru, Obanai's pet snake, would save the day. Obanai and the snake are so in sync that when Obanai lost his eyes in the manga, he was able to rely on Kabamaru to keep up with Muzan. On top of that, he learned how to see the transparent world mid-fight without his eyes. Everyone can agree that Obanai was one of the biggest contributors to taking down Muzan. From nearly beheading the Demon King to coming back from near death multiple times, there's no way that Tanjiro would be able to defeat the Serpent Hashira. Now, we have one of the most interesting battles in this entire video, Tanjiro versus Gyu. This is the student of water breathing versus the master of water breathing. But unfortunately for Gyu, the student will surpass the master. See, when these two fought Akaza together, Tanjiro actually outperformed Gyu. Akaza had the upper hand for almost the entire battle until Tanjiro mastered the use of the transparent world and selfless state, an ability that hides your presence. With these two abilities, Tanjiro decapitated Akaza, which is something that generations of Hashira couldn't do. Later in the fight against Muzan, Gyu did learn how to turn his blade red. However, he never learned to use this power at will, something that Tanjiro mastered. The only advantage Gyu has is battle experience, but level 3 Tanjiro's overwhelming strength beats that any day. So far, peak Tanjiro has defeated 5 Hashira and lost to 2. And for the next matchup, Tanjiro fights the Hashira he hates the most. This is Sanami, and he's the Wind Hashira. Now, in the manga, Sanami is shown to be Gyu's equal in every way. In fact, other than their breathing styles, these two have the exact same abilities. They both have a Slayer mark, and they can turn their blades red by clashing with another sword. But since Gyu loses to Tanjiro, so does the Wind Hashira. In fact, out of every Hashira, Sanami will probably be the easiest one for Tanjiro to fight. I mean, these two have already fought each other in the story. I wouldn't be surprised if Tanjiro has some pent-up aggression towards Sanami that he's just been waiting to unleash. This brings Tanjiro's streak to 7 wins and 2 losses. But for his matchup against the strongest Hashira, Tanjiro is straight out of luck. 
See, Gyome was already stronger than everyone before he awakened his Demon Slayer mark, but now that he has that power, he's even stronger. Gyome also has the Transparent World ability, which not only puts him on the same level as Tanjiro, but it also gets rid of Gyome's only weakness, his blindness. And to show how powerful these two upgrades make him, you only have to look at his fight against Muzan. Gyome was the most effective Hashira against the Demon King, and he was even able to teach Obanai how to access the Transparent World while fighting Muzan. Gyome can also turn his weapon red, but he hasn't mastered this as much as Tanjiro, having to clash his weapon against another blade. Fortunately, he can literally do this by clashing his weapon against his own weapon. And he can control this crazy thing like it's part of his body. But what makes it even deadlier is that it's made of the purest nitrine material known to man. Yeah, even Gyome's weapon is overpowered. Based on what this dude did against Muzan and Kokushibo, it's safe to say that Tanjiro has zero chance in a fight. But remember, this is only Tanjiro at level 3, because if we take him to level 4, we have the strongest version of Tanjiro. And spoiler alert, the Hashira stand no chance. This is your 3 second opportunity to leave the video if you don't want to get spoiled. 3, 2, 1. Okay, level 4 is Demon King Tanjiro. Not only is Demon Tanjiro immune to sunlight, he also has the same body power-ups that Muzan does, meaning he can use attacks like whips and energy blasts. In fact, if Tanjiro's conscience wasn't strong enough to stop Muzan from taking over his body, everyone would have died. And that's why Demon Tanjiro wins. The current Hashira are very strong, but the only way they defeated Muzan is by exposing him to the sun, a weakness that Demon Tanjiro doesn't have. But what would happen after Demon Tanjiro defeated the Hashira? Well, this video right here explains all that and more. So click it.